Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Hey guys, I'm still working on making a new gib for the Monarch lathe. Uh, in the first part of this series here, we actually milled uh, the taper to create this uh, new gib out of a piece of cast iron. In this second part of this series, we're gonna be working on doing the side angles, putting the 60 degree angles in here uh, so that this will actually work as a gib. If you missed that part one episode, I encourage you to go back and take a look at that. And uh, if not, we'll get right in here and get them doing some more machining. So I got my taper milled in here now. The uh, face mill that I used over there, I am really impressed with. Uh, that thing made a really nice finish on this. Uh, so we're ready to move on though. We got a little bit more machining to do. Now, if you look at the original gib, you see we got this little trapezoidal thing going on right here. And these are 60 degree angles uh, that are milled in here. And that's the next step. We need to go ahead and get those roughed in. And, and you can kind of see on the ends here, I uh, sketched out the angles, the direction of the angle that I need to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with this little um, uh, dovetail cutter. This is a 60 degree angle and we're going to need to kind of cut that out on both sides. Now to do that, it's going to require some special uh, holding over on the milling machine. And uh, fortunately, I've got a friend. Uh, Lance Balsey, who's been through our scraping class. You've probably seen him in some videos before. But uh, Lance actually had made some gibs for a machine of his, and he made this little jig, and he was kind enough to let me borrow it so I didn't have to make one myself. But what you got here is just, just a piece of aluminum. What we're gonna do is take some clamps. We'll clamp this down on here. And now I've got this thing where I got a little bit of a uh, area up underneath the bottom, and I guess what it needs to go this way. The cutter will come in here, we'll cut that taper all the way down. Once we get a good taper, uh, what we'll do is we'll flip it around. On the other side of this little jig, he has a dovetail in there. And I'm gonna just use the gib here, but you can turn around and that's gonna clamp in there again. You'll just clamp this thing down on here and come through and uh, cut your angle on the other side. Uh, boom, just run this thing right down through here. So that's the, uh, that's the plan. and. Uh, I'm gonna be using my Randy Richard made uh, dovetail cutter here. Randy's got a YouTube channel. He sent me one of these a while back and I think I've used it for one small job. This is gonna be a pretty big job for it. It's gonna be a little bit slow uh, cutting that whole piece out there uh, with just a single uh, tooth on this, on this dovetail cutter, but hey, we got plenty of time. So I'm gonna go and we're gonna get this set up on the mill and let's start cutting some more metal. I got my jig here mounted on the milling machine and I've ran this back and forth with an indicator here and I've got it fairly close. I mean, actually there's, there's a little bit of variance in this uh, piece that I'm going up against, a couple of thousandths. I could come in here with an end mill and clean it up, but to be honest with you, I'm not too worried about it because I just need to get a straight cut on here and it's gonna work out when I get on the other side. I'm gonna grind these two bevels uh, parallel to one another uh, eventually. So um, if it's out by a couple of thousand, it's not gonna be a big deal. We'll get it as close as we can. I may go ahead and uh, clean up this other side to the table before I do it, but this is gonna be fine right here. So as of right now, I'm just gonna come in here He's got some quarter 20 holes drilled back here in this back. And I've got this uh, nice little strap clamp kit that was made by Paul Boulay that I picked up a couple of years ago out at the Bar Z Bash. And um, this is a great little kit here just for this purpose. He's got everything I need. Uh, let's see what we're gonna put together. So grabbing the pieces out of the kit here, we'll start by just putting a little jack screw in the back here. This. Uh, Little thumb screw just lets you adjust how high up and down you want this thing to be. And next we'll take one of the quarter 20 screws and we'll put a washer on it. We'll put it right here. Now these are just right on this jig where I can actually drop the little jack screw off the back. We'll put our uh, piece up here because this is a little bit low on this side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these extra washers. I'm gonna put that little washer in there just as a spacer. It's just to give me a little extra clearance on here. Here we go. I'll come and tighten those down in a minute, but we'll go ahead and get the rest of these on here.
All right, I think we got all that clamped down good, nice and steady. Now we'll come in here, we'll set our cutter up, and we'll come in here, we'll just undercut up underneath this. I took the, a couple minutes and actually drew lines on there to show my angle so I don't make this give backwards, uh, which I've heard that people have done before. And I don't want to be one of those people. So anyway, let's get that set up and we'll start cutting. I think we're ready to go. I got my cutter just below the surface of that. I'm going to need most of that face by the time I get down here to the thicker end. Because of the direction of this, I'm only going to be able to really feed it in one direction, which is going to be coming toward the camera here. And turn it on. I'm going to be playing around with my speeds, trying to find one that fits. I'm just going to kind of bring it in here first. I'm touching off right there. And I'm not really sure how much of a cut this thing's going to take. So I think I'm going to start with about maybe 20 thousandths. So about right there. About 25 actually. And let's see what happens. I'm just going to turn my auto feed on. Oh yeah, cutting like butter. All right, we're gonna let this thing uh, go. I'll take a couple of passes and I'll bring you guys back. Let you see how it's coming. making progress here. It's just about to start cutting even on the short end of taper, but as it gets down toward the back side, it gets thicker, so we're gonna have to cut into that a good bit. Uh, we're taking about a 30,000 step to cut right now. May have to back it off a little bit because that, the, the, the width of that face is getting wider and wider as we uh, go in. So we have to make some adjustments. But so far, so good. Uh, just cutting that paper right in there. Looks like we got our 60 degree undercut all the way out here to the very end. It cleaned up on the short side first, obviously, but as that taper gets thicker, you have to go in deeper and deeper, but uh, we got it all the way down now. So we'll get this uh, jig turned around and start cutting the other side. So I've turned my jig around now where I have the dovetail side sticking out. So basically we got our dovetail here and it will go right up underneath that shelf. But before I clamp it in there, I want to true this edge up. Um, this side is a little bit more critical. The other side, you know, once we got a, 
a side that was cut. Now we need to make the other side parallel to it. Now I've got this indicated in as close as I could, but it's out by a couple of thou uh, just from variability in the material. So I'm just going to very lightly take a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the back and uh, make sure that we got this thing trued up. And once that is done, I think we'll be ready to go. So yeah, we'll take a little bit off the bottom there. I'm going to just bring it in until I'm just taking a couple of thou off the back. Pop my table down, and we'll let her feed on through there. So now we got our dovetail, matching dovetail in the back. We got our dovetail we've already cut. It's just going to fit right up in there. That should make us a nice parallel cut now that we trued that up on the machine. And uh, we'll go ahead and get our clamps put back in. Clamp this part down. I want to, there's a little ledge up underneath this is going to undercut. So I don't want to clamp out here and rock it off. I want to clamp in the back where I have plenty of uh, pressure going down. So that should be good there. And we'll get our other ones in here. All right, I think we got them all on there. And we should be ready to start undercutting this side. I want to make sure I got my angles going right. Yeah, we're going to be parallel. So uh, we'll touch off and start on this. I'm just going to feed in here, touch off. And again, we'll make about a 30,000th depth of cut. That seemed to work that pretty good last time. Honestly, I could probably take a little bit more than that, but hey, we're just going to take our time and get this done. I think we're all through here with the milling. I'm still going to have to grind it uh, to get it to the final size. And I'll tell you, I left just a little bit of thickness up here on the top because I know I've got a good bit to come off on that thickness still uh, over on the grinder. And I wanted to make sure I had plenty of material in there. But as you can see, we now have that nice trapezoidal gib. It's oversized. Uh, but we are we got we got something we can work with now and take to the grinder. This is the original gib. This is the one we just made. And as you can see, this one is a little bit oversized, pretty much in all dimensions. We got a little bit of extra length, a little bit of extra thickness this way, and extra extra thickness in this way. But the taper should be pretty close. And even though it's it's a little bit oversized right now, I want to just do a test fit here in the machine and. Yeah, it's coming in. Obviously, as we thin it in this direction, it's going to slide in farther. Now, we've still got a little bit of play back here in the back, um, which I expected because the original gib, I think it had about three and a half thousandths. It's hard for me to tell just rocking that, but as we get it in there farther, we can uh, make some fine adjustments on that angle uh, that we grind, the final angle we grind over on the surface grinder. But bottom line is, is we now have a gib that we can work with. So uh, anyway, making progress on this. So from a bar of cast iron to a nicely machined 
Gib. <laughs> There's the process I use, getting some unusual uh, geometry on this and some uh, interesting work holding to get it done as well. So that's going to be a wrap on this one. We're going to take this next over to the grinder and we'll get it down to the proper size. We'll get all the, the angles and stuff exactly right, uh, fine tune things just a little bit so that it fits up really well and then hopefully get a new gib scraped in on that lathe pretty soon. Uh, but with that, we'll catch you on the next time around. So for now, as always, thanks for watching guys. We always appreciate you viewing. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll catch you next time around. Thanks for watching guys.